the ever elusive Oatly. It just tastes freaking good. If you don't get to Whole Foods before 10 a.m., it's out. Um, and it's just awesome. Awesome with coffee. It's the new year. I think everybody's kind of looking to start things off on the right foot and, um, you know, get new routines and practices in place that'll, you know, keep them healthy or make them productive and all that. And I figured it'd be cool to share kind of my morning routine and how uh, I start my day and what I've found works for me, uh, both from a health standpoint, but also from a uh, getting stuff done standpoint. When I set up my, my schedule correctly and allow myself to take the morning for myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm able to bang this out and that, these are the days when I'm at my best from noon to midnight. First thing I do is kind of just put my feet on the ground and kind of wake up my body a little bit and then I say, please allow me to recognize and accept all the miracles of today. Uh, I say that three times and I say today is going to be and I pick kind of three adjectives. So today is going to be an awesome day. Today is going to be a fantastic day. Today is going to be a fun day. Um, and then I finish with saying thank you for today. And um, sounds corny, sounds kind of like woo woo, but it's amazing how if you just get up and you say those things to yourself, it makes you focus on the things that, that you have and that you're grateful for. I like to do a little apple cider vinegar and water. There's all kinds of theories about the acidity of coffee and the apple cider vinegar kind of balances things out. It makes me feel good, that's why I do it. And then I like to fire up some coffee. I get the Chemex here. I find it makes the best cup. I sleep with my phone on airplane mode, um, and I, I try to keep it that way for the first 45 minutes or so. Like I'm a snob, I guess, with most things I put in my body, I'm definitely a snob with, uh, with coffee too. You know, it's something you drink every day. Um, you might as well make it the best it can be. So yeah, I usually just will sit here and enjoy my coffee and, you know, sometimes it's 20 minutes, sometimes it's 45. Um, and again, I'm just trying to like wake up under control, um, kind of at ease and, and peaceful versus jumping out of bed and flying around and, and, you know, facing all the tasks that I need to do. So, you know, I know a lot of people, when I tell them kind of my routine, they're like, well, I don't have time for that. Or, um, you know, I gotta get the kids to school and all that. And I totally understand that. This is the way I've set up things and I choose to set things up this way. And it's not like this every day if I have things in the morning um, that I need to, get to, I will skip half or, or all of it some days. So, but on an ideal day, this is how I kind of started out. It's hard to sit and not pick up your phone. It's hard to just chill out for a minute. And I think, you know, in today's world, people are more and more searching for how to do that because of all the stresses that come with technology and all that stuff. So um, I've kind of just, learn to do it and somewhat force myself to do it. You gotta kind of be gentle on yourself. If you can't sit still or you can't um, sort of let thoughts go that come, uh, you just kind of gotta be cool with that. And like anything new, you're gonna suck at it at first and then you just gotta, you know, keep rolling and you get better and better as, as you go. So yeah, now I literally move three feet. I got my notebooks over here. Uh, this is my latest one. This is an old one that's, you know, totally filled. Basically, I start by um, writing down the things I want to get done that day. So, 
that could be you know something business related it could be something i want to do for my girlfriend it could be you know going to visit mom it could be whatever i want to check off that day i just list out i'll circle the ones that are like i do not end today without getting them done um, sometimes i'll put numbers by them to kind of prioritize them um, in the order i want to get done um, and then on the bottom i write my big picture goals the things that i'm striving toward that may come 10 years from now but they're real big picture goals um, and they're very specific so you know the number of restaurants i want to open the you know check i want to write to my parents and the trip i want to take my whole family on uh, things like that it reminds me of you know where i'm trying to go um, and i think what I've found is when I don't have those goals, I don't really know what I'm striving toward. And um, it just kind of relates the day-to-day -day grind back to, all right, where are we going? And generally kind of those five to 10 things I write down for the day are little stepping stones to you know, move closer and closer to um, those, those goals. And you can't achieve you know, your goals without actually having them. Um, and then at the end, I write two statements that are kind of my like uh, sort of phrases that I try to live by. Uh, the first one is no harm done. Um, and that's just kind of like a, I want to lead a life where I'm not doing any harm to myself and, and my body and the people around me. Um, and I'm not doing any harm to, you know, the planet and other people on it. And, and then I picked this one up from... Uh, I think Ed Milet, but uh, I write down, I am world class. And whether you actually are or not, um, it just kind of fires me up. It's like, all right, I am world class. Like what would an entrepreneur or what would somebody that is world class doing what, you know, I'm doing, what would they do today? How would they be in the world? Um, you know, and if you're world class, you're getting shit done. You're not, you know, you're not dicking around, you're, you're being productive and you're being an example to other people. So that sort of gets all the, the crap that I'm thinking about out of my head um, and onto paper. And I kind of have a plan now for the day. Um, and that kind of allows me to um, move over to meditation and get my meditation in. Yeah, the meditation is definitely, not only does it like calm me and relax me, and from a health standpoint, like I believe in the benefits of it, you know, the, the people that live the longest and disease free, they don't have a lot of stress in their life. They've, they've figured out ways to, you know, decrease stress and uh, meditation for me is something that allows me to do that. Um, the breathing that I mix in, um, there's also a ton of science around just breathing um, and deep breathing and how that can literally change your entire uh, physiology and, you know, even the physiology of your brain and how you think. And, and number two, the actual visualization of everything and sort of like manifesting your reality and manifesting your dreams is kind of like a popular hot thing right now and again there is like science to back that you actually visualizing that future self um, actually based on quantum physics makes it more likely for that outcome to happen so from both a health standpoint because it feels good I, I believe it you know uh, benefits my health but um, also as a visualiz visualization tool and kind of a manifestation tool to um, you know, make your goals become a reality. So that's why I do. I choose to run because I actually enjoy it. I find I have to kind of drag myself to the gym lately. Um, I love being outdoors and um, I always encourage people to do the things they love uh, when it comes to exercise. Um, you will never see me at a 6 a.m you know, boot camp or, um, you know, waking up at the ass crack of dawn to like hit the gym or anything. I don't think that's like a sustainable thing. I think people like overdo it with the like kind of hard ass mentality of getting up early and getting to the boot camp when 
they just dread it. And there's something about when you drag yourself um, to something you don't want to go to. Um, you know, it just, it just doesn't, in the long term, you're just going to quit doing it. So why not just do the things you love and, you know, as simple as getting out for a run or a walk or going to a yoga class or, or whatever. I like to compare, you know, to the longest living people. It's like, you know, they don't have gyms. They don't, uh, they don't kick their ass. They don't go on a hundred mile runs. They just move throughout their day. And those are the people that live the longest. And that's kind of my goal. So that's how I sort of approach things. Thank you.